Lord, how much. Turn your Bibles to Genesis 37. Genesis 37. Oh, 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 tell me who can stand me for me when I call on that great name. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus. We have the <sighs> Now, Jacob lived in the land where his father had lived, in the land of Canaan. These are the records of the generations of Jacob. Joseph, when he was 17 years of age, was pastoring a flock with his brothers. While he was still a youth, while the sons of Bilhah and the sons of Zilpah, his father's wives, excuse me, along with the sons of, uh, the sons of Bilhah and the sons of Zilpah, his father's wives, and Joseph brought back a bad report about them to their father. Now, Israel loved Joseph more than all his sons because he was the son of his old age and he made him a multi-colored tunic very colored good yeah very colored coat his brothers saw that their father loved him more than all his brothers so they hated him yeah it happens It don't happen to everybody, but it, it happens. So they hated him and could not speak to him on friendly terms. I want you to focus your attention to this, this, this space, this pericope, this scripture, this, this moment right here. Something happens in the middle of the ugly stuff in the middle of the hate. The reason the Bible mentions uh, Bala, Bala and, and Zilpah is because his brothers were, were having sex with his stepmothers and his father he went to tell his father what was happening and, and then his father made him this beautiful coat because his father loved him but the brothers, they, they hated him and his coat Forget you and your coat. In the midst of all this hate, this broken family, his dad literally, his dad literally was named Trickster. You come from a father that's known for tricking. Some of y'all not gonna get that till later. Don't don't Google tricking, please. father known for tricking he he married his 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 first cousin <laughs> she was ugly so he married his her sister too yeah i'm giving it all to you his brothers having sex with his other two wives they hate him he got this coat from his dad so they hate him more and in the middle of all that Verse 5 says, Joseph had a dream. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you. We give you glory and honor. Lord, help me help them. In Jesus' name I pray. <sighs> thank you for exhaling on us today, Lord Jesus. Thank you for, there's a fresh wind in this place. There's a sweet spirit. Nobody, nobody, no matter what I do after this, nobody in this room should leave the same way they came into here. 
God, we thank you for being with us, God. In fact, we'll thank you in advance. We'll thank you right now. We'll give you glory right now. We'll give you glory right now. Before anything, if anything further goes on, we just want to thank you for what you've already done, God. You did it, God. You did it. You fixed it. You worked it out, God. You're the miracle worker. You're the promise keeper. You did it already, God. You did it all. You did it already. I don't have to say a thing. I don't have to preach a word. You did it already. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. And amen. High five three people and say, I got a dream. I got a dream. I got a dream. I got a dream. I had a dream. I got a dream. I want to start by welcoming everybody to church today. Thank you guys for being here. Uh, if we have overflow uh, seats, let's go ahead and bring those out or whatever. Everybody don't have to stand up. We, we got a seat for you, amen. Amen. But thank you guys so much for being here, for being at God Chasers today. Um, especially those of you guys who are visiting. Thank you for being here and visiting with us. You could have chosen a myriad of different churches. You chose this church. And, and I, I'm saying all that just to say that this message today might not be for you. The message that I preached today, the message that God gave me, might not be for you. You might have, you might have got real cute today. Look real, look real fly. Gotten, did your best mirror work. You know, beat your face real good. Drove all the way here from somewhere, and got all the way to this room just to find out that the message I'm gonna speak today might not be for you. You might have lived 20, 25 years walking on a path and expecting that there you'll get to some place like this and there'll be some man on the stage and he will say something that'll help you, that'll get you to the next level, that'll get you over. And, I, and usually I, I pray that I can be that person for somebody, but today it might not be you. The truth is the message that I I'm coming to deliver to you today. The oil that I have to bring to you today is strictly for dreamers. It's not for anybody else. If you don't have a dream in your heart, in your belly, if you don't have something that's pushing you forward, you might not, you, 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 you might want to get a cup of coffee and sign a visitor's card. And uh, we'll see you next Sunday. Today, I want to talk to dreamers. Today, I want to talk to somebody who who has something pushing them in their hearts. Today, I want to I spend a little time just focusing on those who, 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 for some reason, you never fit in. Oh, Jesus. For some reason, you never, you never fit in. You, you, you couldn't get everybody's approval. Amen. Let me help you right here. You don't need nobody's approval to do the God-given dream that God gave you. If he gave it to you, he's approved it already. He, uh, he already put his stamp on it. He said, I gave it to you, so it's approved. It's done already. In, in, in Jesus' name, all, now all you have to do is walk it out. But the truth is, there is somebody in this room. There are some people in this room. I know that because he, he, was, he had you on my mind all morning as I was putting these notes together and I've had these notes for some week some weeks but this morning they started to take a different shape they started to define themselves in a different way they started to take a little bit of a different shape and 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 and, and he laser pointed me towards dreamers the truth is it, it, there, there could be a dreamer sitting right next to you and you won't recognize the dreamer because there is nothing external that identifies a dreamer. It's mostly something that's happening internal. And they might look like you, act like you, smell like you, walk like you, talk like you, but they not like you. There's something different. Oh, man, maybe there's no dreamers in this room. <laughs> maybe, it's, maybe there's just dreamers on the live stream there. Because, because th there should be something right now in your belly that's kicking around because of, because of where we're going in this conversation. I love to talk about the, the, the time when Jesus uh, was to be born and, 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 and Jesus was in his mother's womb. 
And he shows up to his mother's cousin's house. And his mother's cousin is named Elizabeth. And Elizabeth is also pregnant. Now Mary doesn't know Elizabeth is pregnant. And Elizabeth doesn't know Mary is pregnant. But when Mary shows up, all of a sudden the baby that's inside Elizabeth starts kicking around. I just want to know who in here have a baby that's kicking around right now because of the word that I haven't even said it. But just because I showed up in the room, there's something kicking on the inside of you. If there's one or two of you, I would that you would just give God some praise right now because I'm here. Talk to you this morning. Here to talk to you this morning. That's somebody, that's somebody who woke up like you, got dressed like you, uh, made up their face like you, but they got something kicking around on the inside of them. And the truth is, it, it's, been, it's been dealing with them for weeks, maybe even months. Maybe even years, resolution after resolution, new year after new year, there's something greater on the inside of me. I don't know what it is, but there's something greater on the inside. I can't date whoever. There's something greater on the inside. I can't be friends with whoever. There's something great. Y'all too messy for me. There's something greater on the inside of me. And because of that, I've been ostracized and I've been marginalized and I've been hated on and I can't help it. There's something greater on the inside. That's the person I want to talk to today. The person who has a dream in their heart, a dream in their spirit, a dream that, that, that it really, it's not that they can't let go of the dream, the dream won't let go of them. You tried to do what everybody else did, watch what everybody else watched. It, it, you can't even get in the green leaf like everybody else got into it. You can't get into the show like everybody else got into it because there's something on the inside. Are there any dreamers in this room today? Are there any dreamers in this room today? See, see, I need you to understand something. When God gives you a dream, as long as you are alive, that dream is still in play. When God purposes a dream for you, as long as you are breathing, that's true. Hear me right here. Stop waiting for people to validate who you are. Your breath in and out is your validation for what God is trying to do. Your breath, take a deep breath in. Let it out. Stamped, validated. God said you're supposed to do that. You when he's done with you, the breath stops. When he's done with you, the breath stops. As long as you are breathing, oh Jesus, that means he's still working it together for your. Somebody should just give God praise for that. That he's working it together for. I don't like what it looked like, but I know it's working. I don't like how I feel about it, but I know it's working. I don't like how my circumstance turned out, but I. Look at somebody and say, I have a dream. I wake up in the morning and I might proceed to do what I'm trying to do. I might proceed to do, oh, Jesus, what, 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 what I feel like is my job. But the truth is, it's my occupation. It's not my vocation. It occupies my time, but it doesn't occupy my heart. I have a dream. I go to work so that I can take care of my family. I go to work so I can feed my family. But really, there's something deeper on the inside. There is a I got a dream. I, 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 I've tried to sit and sour and soak in the space with everybody else. I, I've tried to fit in. I, I, I bought my Marathon and fresh wash gabos. Y'all don't know what that is. Y'all don't know what that is. I wore my guest jeans. I, I even bought a fruitful shirt so I could look like Pastor Adriana. But the truth is, I never felt like I fit in. I got a dream. Let me tell you, let me, let me help you with something. A, a dream is a glimpse into your better. When God puts a dream in your heart, what he's doing is he's giving you a glimpse 
into your better. He's giving you a glimpse into your purpose. Some of y'all, you don't, you don't know how you're going to get there, but you can't help but dreaming of there. You don't know how to get from here to there, but there is on your mind more than here. You don't know how to get from here to there, but there occupies all your space, all your time, all your thinking, and it's you I want to talk to today. A glimpse, a glimpse. Somebody say a glimpse. God will show you a glimpse. He'll show you a glimpse. He'll show you just a moment and, and, and a glimpse. It'll look so good over there. It'll look so wonderful over there. It'll look so blessed over there. And you'll be wondering, well, God, how do I get from here to there? But the truth is, if he showed you the way or the route, you would give up. Because the way to your destination is never as blessed as the destination. The route to your purpose is never as amazing as the actual purpose. And so what you'll end up doing is you'll give up at go. Because you saw what you'd have to go through to get there. So God can't show you everything. He just shows you glimpses. He shows you glimpses of why you should be the manager. He shows you glimpses of why you should own the business. He shows you glimpses. And oftentimes, the thing that has frustrated you, the thing that is making you so angry, is the fact that you're frustrated with... It. Hear me right here. The thing that has made you frustrated and angry is that you know how to fix it, but you're powerless to do so. You know how to change it. You know how to make it better because he put the innate ability in you to fix things, but you got to go through the process that's necessary to shave you off and to clean you up so that when you get in that place, you won't make a fool out of yourself. And we all want the title without the process. We want the degree without the hours spent at the library. We, 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 we want the money without the ability to manage it. He says, I'll teach you how to manage at 30 so I can give you 300. I teach you how to manage. And he says this. He says, he says, so I'm giving you glimpses. I'm giving you, he says, he who is faithful in the little, I'm going to bless him. With the much. He was faithful with a little bit. I'm going to bless you with more. And the truth is. Oh I got to close this. Because I'm way off that. The truth is. That God is, has been showing you little. Showing you little. Showing you little. Showing you little. And waiting for you to get dissatisfied with it. Because, it's not, not, because as soon as you get dissatisfied with it. You will take another As soon as you get disheveled, as soon as you get dissatisfied, you'll take another step. So God says, okay, okay, I'm going to put you in a position where, where you have to take a step. Yeah. Some of y'all, oh, I'm going to help you right here. Some of y'all should be happy he broke up with you. Yeah. You don't got to shout. I already know who I'm talking to. Some of y'all should be happy he left you. You should be, you should be ecstatic because you would have never left that broken down, messed up, Some of y'all should be happy you got fired because you wouldn't have left that dog, oh, Jesus. Some of y'all should have been happy. You should have been happy they stopped talking to you. They stopped being your friend. When you look at their status now, you just say, mm. The truth is you would have never stepped. God has to put you in a situation. So, so, so because of that, uh, hear me right here. I, I'm going to get in trouble for this one right here, Pastor Tab. The truth, it is, the truth is, he made them hate you. Yeah. I'm not talking to everybody. The truth is, he made them. His daddy made him a coat. You know these brothers don't like me. You know these brothers don't like me. Now you're going to make me a coat. I need you to understand something about this coat, this very color, this, 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 this coat of many colors. The, the truth is you'll see very, like, very uh, uh, sort of re representations of that coat in Christendom today. But a lot of times they get it wrong because they make that coat without sleeves. But the coat of many colors would have had sleeves down to your, your wrist. Because the person who wore that coat didn't do the work. Let me, 
me help you right here. God said, I'm about to, I'm about to make it in such a way that I'm going to bless you and you're not even going to have to work for He said, I'm going to give you better and you're not even going to have. Listen to me when I tell you something. I'm going to give you better and you're not going to have to do a thing to get it. You're not going to have to do one thing to earn it. Because you can't earn it anyway. Can't earn grace. It's a gift. Sit down and let somebody give you something. Here we go. I'm, I'm not talking to him. I'm talking to all y'all. I just looked at him. <laughs> it's too late. They already do. <laughs> Love them anyway. Here we go. They gave him a coat. The coat, the coat of many colors would have went down to your wrist and down to your ankle. It, 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 J Joseph was the least born. He was the last born. But his father loved him because he was the first born to the, to the, he was the first born to the wife that Jacob actually loved. <laughs> he was the last born, but he was the first one born right. He was the last one. See, see, you're going to be the last one, but you're going to be the first one that did it right. And God going to bless you because you did it right. Not because you did it first, but because you did it. So he said, he said, he said I'm going to make you this coat. I'm going to make you this coat. And he gave him a coat. It was a manager's coat. It wasn't just special for, for Jacob. He didn't just make Jacob a coat. He made him a manager's coat. And Jacob would come out to the field where his brothers was working. According to had the manager's coat up. <laughs> uh, side note, I'm going to make a commercial. Our minister Josh is here from the, the South Chicken and Waffles. I love him to death, man. He's, a, he's great. He's wonderful, right? He's a, he's, he's a good guy. One day... I, I admired that he had on a South Chicken and Waffle shirt, like a, a good one with the collar and embroidery and everything. I just admired the shirt. I said, oh, that's a nice shirt, man. That's wonderful. The next time he saw me, he gave me one of those shirts. I keep trying to figure out when is the right time to wear my, the South Chicken and Waffles manager shirt. If I wear it here, y'all gonna laugh at me. But if I wear it there, they gonna get mad at me. Because I didn't have to do anything. I didn't have to do anything to earn. A dream, 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 a dream. So, so, so they already, they already can't stand him. He already got a messed up family system. Don't, you don't have to raise your hand if your family messed up. It's okay. I'll raise my hand for you. Everybody all messed up, crazy, deranged. Uh, got stuff going on. I love them all though. Don't get it twisted. I love every, I'll fight you about them. What'd you say? They crazy, but they mine. Don't play with me. Come from a messed up family system. He already got his, his stepbrothers don't like him. Now his actual brothers don't like him because he got this stupid coat on. <laughs> and in the middle of all that, he has a dream. Dreams will mess you up. Dreams will mess you up. If you really got something in your heart, it, it'll mess you up. It'll mess up your relationships, your friendships. I tried to like him. I tried to like her, but it don't fit with my, see, see the way my dream works. See the way my dream works. We can't, we can't be in this relationship. And I know you like me and I like you, but we can't have sex before marriage because the way my dream works is. It's 
It's not that I don't like you. It's not that I'm not attracted to you. I'm just as human as you are. But the way my dream works is... It's not that I don't like the taste of alcohol, the taste of cigarettes, the taste of weed, but the way my dream... I'm not mad at you, but did you see the way my dream... Alicia, did you see the way my dream is set up? Joseph has a dream. I, I, I love this. We'll, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more maybe about this next week. We'll see, um, we'll see what God says. But, but, but it, next week we'll be celebrating the birthday of a man who is known for his dream. We'll make a big deal about it. We'll shout about it. In fact, we, you, you lucky. We live, in the, we live in the city with the largest march in the whole nation. Who would have thought that? I'll tell you, I grew, I grew up in San Antonio. I thought everybody marched. I did. We moved to Seattle. We was like, oh, it's about January. When's the march? Ain't no march. I'm like, y'all don't got a march? No, we don't got a march. Some of us not even off work. We got to go to work. Y'all got to go to work? <laughs> Two days a year, I don't work. My birthday and the honorable Dr. Martin Luther the King's birthday... I'm calling in. I'm off. <laughs> Two days. I'm sure I'm not going to work. Okay. Uh, so, where was it? Where was it? Oh, Jesus. Martin Luther King has this dream. And we know him just like we know Joseph. We know him for his dream. Look at somebody and say, I got a dream. Got a dream. We know him for his dream, but the truth is, Casey, Minister Casey, the truth is that we almost didn't get that dream. If you know anything about what some of the things that happened during that ceremony, the first thing is, I'm, I'm going to help you right here, and I'm, I'm about done. I'm going to help you right here. The first thing is that somebody sabotaged the sound system. If you know anything about that day, that the very day when they got up and they tried to do the sound check, the system didn't work. Oh, I need y'all to hear me because oftentimes somebody's trying to sabotage your sound system. That's the problem because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And somebody is trying to sabotage your sound system. The music you're listening to is sabotaging your sound system. The people you follow on Facebook are sabotaging your sound system. The stuff you watch on YouTube. I start to say on Cinemax. It's sabotaging your sound system. Somebody came in and they messed with the wires. They sabotaged the sound system. They tried to make it so the greatest speech to ever be spoken by a human being wouldn't get heard. Sabotage the sound system. I could stay right there. Come on, come on, come on. You know, the friends, the people you talk to and associate. You all on the phone with them. They sabotaging your sound system. First things first. They tried to sabotage the sound system. The sound system did not start working till right before the ceremony was supposed to start. With that being said, can we give a hand to our sound team back here? This time? Sometimes they work on the Martin Luther King schedule. They work right there. On they get us there, though, man. Right before 12, 12, it must be... Okay. I have a dream. <laughs> so, so, then he begins, there's, there's, there's other people speaking. There's at least nine other people that speak. We only know about his dream. I dare you to quote one line from one other person that spoke that day. Now, I'm going to take that further. I dare you to quote one line from Martin Luther King's original speech that day. Yeah, original speech. Because that section that we know as I have a dream wasn't in the speech. It wasn't in the letters that he gave. It wasn't in the paperwork that he handed over. It wasn't in any of that. In fact, he was closing out his regular speech. The I have a dream speech is 35 minutes. The I have a dream section that you know, <laughs> that we get the little kids to come up and recite, is five minutes. He spoke for 30 minutes. Nobody knows what he said.
People might not pay you attention, but they'll pay your dream. They won't know nothing about you, but they... Some of y'all can't tell me who invented the iPhone. You know his dream. You don't know him, you know his... So as he was closing out the speech, similar to the way I'm closing out this speech, <laughs> he was wrapping everything up. His voice was coming down. He was landing the plane. And then all of a sudden, a beautiful young lady, a singer, some of y'all might have heard of her, her name is Mahalia Jackson. She is standing on the side, getting ready to sing her solo, and she yells out, Dr. King! Tell them about your dream. Wasn't in the speech, wasn't in the transcript, wasn't supposed to be said at all. And then all of a sudden, the orator steps up and says, I have a dream today. And it becomes the most famous speech you ever heard. But the truth is, it wasn't even supposed to be a part of the ceremony. There's some things we can learn from this. The first thing is, we'll get back to Jacob next week, uh, to Joseph next week. But the first thing we can learn from this is, you need some people on your sideline shouting, don't forget your dream. You need some people on the sideline next to you yelling out, don't forget your, Jacoby, don't forget your, Tina, don't forget your. I don't know if y'all got enough dream shouters on your sidelines. You need somebody who knows your dream and the, oh yeah, because this is that bad theology where y'all say, don't tell people your dream because they could do something. Else. Can't nobody do nothing about what God have for you. What they going to do? To, your name's on it. How they going to stop you from getting to what God have? Don't tell people your dream. They might do it first. They might do it first, but they ain't going to do it right. I don't tell people my dream, you know, because they, they might do No, 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 no. See, y'all don't understand. God's got a blessing with my name. Okay. Mahalia Jackson yells out, Martin, Dr. King, tell him about your dream. And then he begins to tell them about his dream. He begins to tell them about his dream. And you don't remember the speech, but you remember the dream. You don't remember the speech, but you remember the dream. Here's what, that, here's what I'm saying to you, is that people, not, they may not remember everything that happened to you till now, they won't remember. Everything that happened to you before your dream, they won't remember. Everything you think, you, 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 you think you're getting ridiculed and ostracized because of what happened prior to your dream. But the truth is, you're going to get rid of, ridiculed and ostracized because of your dream. They're not going to remember what happened to your dream. Let me give you, let me give you just a little bit of story. So jo jo Joseph has this dream and he says, he says, hey, we were out in the field and it was, it was uh, 11 grain, 11 uh, stalks of grain. He said, and it was actually 12. I was the 12th one and all the 11, they stood up and then they turned towards me and they bowed down. Now, Joseph has 11 brothers. <laughs> they was like, man, you saying we supposed to bow down to you? No, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying I had a dream. <laughs> Joseph goes on a little bit. And they can't stand him already. He got the stupid coat on. <laughs> I got to imagine, you know, men, right? We just crazy. He walking around with this coat every day. He don't take no, he don't take no baths or nothing. He just got this coat on. Like, you know how we are. He has another dream. He says, he goes to tell his dad. He says, in this dream, in this dream, there was 11 stars and the sun and the moon. And they all bowed down to me. His daddy said, hey, man. I know who the 11 stars are. But, bro, the sun and moon stuff, is that supposed to be me and your mama? Joseph said, I don't know. I just had a dream. 
Next thing you know, long story short, here we go real quick. They, they threw him in a pit. He, he lived in a pit. He was, he was in the pit so long enough for them to eat meals. The Bible said they would eat a meal and decide what to do with him. He's down in this pit, in the cistern, in the cistern. And then uh, all of a sudden, some slavers come, and they take him out of the pit. Uh, man, we're going to dig into this next week because you just don't know that, that the pit is your route to the palace. You keep complaining about the very thing God's using to... <laughs> the, the well is your transportation, Jonah. Wells don't have teeth. It's not meant to kill you. It's meant to transport you to. And the thing you're afraid of. They have teeth. They're little. And somebody, you still stuck on that. They're really little. They're not strong enough to chew up a person. Okay. He gets in his pit. They pull him out the pit. They sell him to slavery. He's in slavery. All of a sudden, he must have been cute. Because the slave master's wife accused him of trying to get at her. And then he went to prison. And he's in prison. But even in prison, he, he, he does something significant, Pastor Kev. Hear me right here. Ooh, Jesus. He stops dreaming. He stops telling people his dream. But in prison, he starts helping people with their dreams. Maybe it's not the dream you have, but the dream you help that's going to get you to the right. All of a sudden, he helps somebody with their dream, and then he finds himself in the presence of the king. Because the king is a king, but the king has a dream problem. How many kings in here have stopped dreaming? How many kings in here have a dream problem? The Bible calls us the sons of God. He has given them the power to be the sons of God. So the truth is, ain't no such thing as a queen. Y'all all kings. That's going to mess with some of y'all. Y'all like, no, -uh. Beyonce said, I'm a queen. No, the Bible says you're a king. <laughs> and then he interprets the king's dreams. And he becomes the second most important person, not in the kingdom, in the world. This is Egypt. He, he, in, he helps the Pharaoh with his dream. And he becomes the second most important person in the world. There's a famine in the land. A famine happens. And all of a sudden, all his brothers and his father and his mother, they have to leave Bethlehem. They have to leave Canaan. Guess where they go? Egypt. Guess who they find when they get there? Joseph. Guess what they have to do? You don't have to make it happen. He didn't do nothing to make it happen. It happened to him and it worked out for his good. Let me help you with something. We're done. Maybe that thing that's happening to you is happening for you and it's working for your good. Maybe the route to better might be painful, but it's working for your good. Maybe everybody won't understand it. Maybe everybody won't be able to deal with you, but the truth is it's working for your good. Just touch yourself and say it's working for my good. It's working for my good. It's working for my good. Everything is working for my good. It's all working together for my good. This makes Romans 8.28 the most truest scripture in the Bible. That all things work together for the good. Of them who love him and who are called according to his purpose. What I'm telling you today is whatever you're going through is working for your good. We already established that you're working from the place of good. And God's trying to get you to better. It might be painful. It might be difficult, but it, it's working for your good. Trust God. Allow him to work in your life. 
yeah, you made some mistakes. Yeah, you did some things. You was probably a little arrogant. You shouldn't have told everybody they was going to have to bow down to you. <laughs> but the truth is, it did, it did happen. Just like he said it would. It's working for your good. I want to help you with this. God said, I'm about to work it all together. Everything you've been through. All the pain you've been through, all the, the divorce, the breakups, the mess ups, the things that you, all the stuff. He said, the mistakes that you made that you can't go back and fix. He said, he said you don't have to go back and fix it. I'm working it together. Stop thinking what you, that you're going to repair what I'm using to work for your good. All you got to do is keep moving forward. I said, I'm working it out for your good. If that's you today. If you're a dreamer, bow your head. I want to pray with you. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you for each and every person who has a dream today, God. I thank you for their life, God. I thank you for what you purposed them to do in life, God. Now, Lord, I even thank you for the ostracization, God. I thank you for the marginalization, God. I thank you for the, the, the haters, yes, Lord. The people who hated on them, the people who didn't appreciate them, didn't love them, didn't see the best for them, God. Because it moved them into a place, God, where you could work it all together for the good, God. So I see you working it together, Lord Jesus. And even though they're still trying, and even though they're still travailing, and even though they still pray about some things, and the truth is, they still cry about some things at night, you're still working it all together. And you said that you've collected every single tear. Thank you, Jesus. You've collected every single tear, God, because even their tears are working for their good, God. You're softening their hearts. You're making them better people, God. You're giving them the opportunity, God, to, to, be, to be gentler, God, to be kinder, God, kinder to other people, Lord Jesus, so they can love on other people, so they can show your love to other people. God, I thank you that you give them the opportunity to be better. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Listen, if you don't know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, I want you to do this. I want you to repeat this prayer after me. Listen, if you say this prayer, I believe that God will change your life for the better. Starting today, at this moment, at this moment, he said, I'll correct it all, I'll fix it all, I'll repair it all. But it, it starts with you taking a step of faith. That step is this. It's real simple. You just repeat this prayer after me. We're all going to say it together so nobody feels alone. It just says, Father, forgive me for all my sins. Come into my heart. Change my heart. Come into my life. Change my life. Father, today, I accept you as my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. Listen, if you said that prayer for the first time or you believed it for the first time, I want you to take one more step of faith. I'm gonna count to three, and on the count of three, I just want you to raise your hand as high as you can raise it. One, it doesn't matter what you did to get here, God is using that all to work out for your good. Two, it doesn't matter what anybody thinks about it. It doesn't matter how anybody feels about it. God says, I wanna know that you're committed to this place to this position if you accept him raise your hand three uh, raise your hand three raise your hand three somebody's coming to pray with you somebody's coming to pray with you and the saints are rejoicing all over the building 